A deep dive into election night, Trump's strength in the South, Harris's path to victory, and the shifting dynamics of suburban voters. In a tense and uncertain election night, political analyst Henrietta Trace from Veda Partners provided a comprehensive breakdown of the early results and trends. Although Donald Trump was leading in southern states like Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina, states that were anticipated to be in his column, Trace maintained that Vice President Kamala Harris still held a significant chance of winning the White House, citing the crucial role of key battleground states in shifting voter demographics. The evening's discussion was filled with nuanced insights about voter behavior, regional trends, and the role of suburban voters, especially women, in determining the eventual winner. As the first results began pouring in, it became apparent that many of the early trends were unfolding as expected, with Trump showing a commanding presence in the South. The focus quickly shifted to the Blue Wall states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, where the battle for electoral votes was expected to tighten as the night wore on. Throughout the conversation, Trace emphasized the importance of voter turnout, particularly among younger voters and unaffiliated voters, who were emerging as a decisive group in swing states like Nevada. While Trump's strong early performance in the South and in rural counties was a notable development, Trace cautioned against reading too much into the early numbers, urging viewers to pay close attention to suburban areas, where demographic shifts and changing political alignments could influence the election's outcome. Despite Trump's apparent strength in key battlegrounds, Trace maintained her forecast that Harris had a 60% chance of winning. According to Trace, while early results in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina suggested a Republican tilt, the election was still up for grabs, with the Blue Wall states remaining pivotal. It was in these states that the balance of power would ultimately be determined, with significant implications for both candidates' electoral paths. As the conversation unfolded, there were several key takeaways that underscored the complexity of the election dynamics and highlighted the factors that would determine the final outcome. Trump's dominance in the South, particularly in Florida, was a focal point of the evening's analysis. His performance in key counties, such as Duval County in Florida, stood out as a sign of strength. Trump was not only outperforming his 2020 numbers, but also significantly increasing his margins, especially among Hispanic voters in the region. This was particularly noteworthy because Florida, as a swing state, had long been seen as one of the most important battlegrounds in the election. Trump's ability to increase his support in areas with large Hispanic populations suggested that his message was resonating more deeply with this demographic than it had in the previous cycle. The fact that he was pulling away from Biden's 2020 margins in Duval County was a signal that Florida could be leaning in his direction once again, despite some earlier indications that the state might be more competitive in this cycle. Meanwhile, Nevada, a state with a large Hispanic population and a growing number of young, unaffiliated voters, was emerging as another crucial battleground. Trace highlighted the importance of Clark County, which encompasses Las Vegas, where early voter turnout had already exceeded 2020 levels. This was particularly significant because the surge in turnout was coming from younger, unaffiliated voters, a group that had been energized by changes in Nevada's voter registration laws. These changes had made it easier for younger voters to register and cast their ballots, and the early signs suggested that this demographic was heavily favoring Harris. Nevada's changing electorate, combined with its status as a swing state, made it a potential tipping point in the election. However, while Harris's early numbers in Nevada were encouraging, Trace cautioned that the outcome was still uncertain and that the state's final result would depend on continued voter engagement throughout the night. Despite Trump's strong performance in Florida and the early signs of a favorable outcome in Nevada, Trace remained optimistic about Harris's prospects, arguing that the vice president still had a 60% chance of winning the White House. This prediction was based on a number of factors, not least of which was the importance of the blue wall states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. These states, which had flipped from blue to red in 2016, were seen as essential for any Democratic candidate hoping to secure a victory. Trace explained that although Trump's numbers in the South were strong, Harris still had a significant path to victory if she could reclaim these critical states. The eventual outcome, she argued, would come down to voter turnout in these states, particularly in key urban areas where large numbers of Black and Latino voters lived. A critical element of the election's outcome was expected to hinge on suburban voters, particularly women. As Trace explained, suburban areas were becoming increasingly diverse, and this shift was expected to have a significant impact on the election. Suburbs, which had historically been more white and conservative, had seen an influx of Latino and black voters in recent years. This was particularly true in battleground states like Pennsylvania, where counties like Allegheny and Lehigh had become increasingly diverse. The suburban vote was key in both Trump's 2016 victory and Biden's 2020 win, and it was clear that this demographic would play a decisive role again in this cycle. In particular, Trace pointed to the importance of white women voters in the suburbs. In 2020, Donald Trump had made significant inroads with this group, winning a higher percentage of white women than he had in 2016. However, Trace emphasized that the suburban vote was no longer as simple as it had been in previous cycles. Suburban areas were becoming more racially diverse, and the preferences of black and Latino voters, particularly women, would play an important role in shaping the final outcome. As the evening wore on, Trace noted that the key question would be whether white women voters, particularly in swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, would continue to support Trump or whether they would shift toward Harris as the night progressed. 
This group, which made up a significant portion of the electorate, had the potential to swing the outcome in either direction. The discussion also highlighted the role of early voting in shaping the election's dynamics. In many states, early voting had already surpassed 2020 levels, suggesting that voter engagement was higher than ever. Early voting was seen as particularly important in states like Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, where high levels of turnout could help Harris maintain a strong position. However, Trace cautioned that early voting was not always predictive of the final result. As the night unfolded, it became clear that much of the final outcome would depend on how voters who had not yet cast their ballots would break, particularly in battleground states where the race was expected to be close. As the night progressed, the commentators continued to emphasize the uncertainty of the outcome, particularly in the key blue wall states. Although Trump was performing well in the South, especially in Florida, there was still significant work to be done in the critical battleground states. Trace and her colleagues pointed out that the overall outcome would depend on whether Harris could maintain her lead in states like Nevada and Michigan, and whether she could flip enough suburban voters to secure victory. Ultimately, the race was expected to come down to the final votes in the Blue Wall states, where turnout, particularly among women and minority voters, would be crucial. In summary, while the early results from the South suggested a strong showing for Trump, it was far from clear whether he could maintain that lead across the rest of the country. Harris still had a strong chance of victory, particularly if she could retain key battleground states like Nevada and Michigan, while also appealing to suburban voters, especially women. The evening's analysis underscored the fluidity of the election, with changing voter dynamics and shifting regional trends, making it impossible to predict the final outcome with certainty. As the night unfolded, all eyes were on the blue wall states, where the balance of power would be determined.